Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and we are God's Church of Love every Saturday. Listen, we're reading Psalms chapter 27, and I want to share with you, there are times coming up where you're going to feel very alone. I just feel that coming. There are times when you are going to feel like the odd man out in your family, like every Every peg sits in the right hole, but here you are a round cylinder in a square peg and you just don't fit in. But don't let that get you down because God is doing a work deep down inside of you and he's preparing you from one phase to the next because he's got many assignments for your life, but you've got to be prepared for each one. And you've got to go through with him instead of against him. All right. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And let me add, this is Pat's two cents adding, what shall I fear? Because we don't know what's coming. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me. Let me go back. I'm feeling like I need to elaborate on that. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Do you notice the operative word is they? Not me. Not we. Not usins, they stumbled and fell. See, God will give you victory over whatsoever comes against you. You don't have to stumble and fell. <laughs> you don't have to stumble and fall. Let them do the stumbling and the falling. Amen. Verse three. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Let me stop there for a minute. Because, see, a lot of times our enemies can take many forms. They can either be demonic forces, forces of darkness. They can be people people that just don't like us, people that don't want us around because they're not of the same spirit. They can be people we are discipling, people we are ministering to, like Peter mentioned earlier. They can be people in our family that ostracize us for whatever reason. They can be old relationships, new relationships, job relationships, whatever. But the bottom line is no matter what, who, or how, God will sustain you through it. And he can and will, if you ask, shield your emotions so that you don't have to uh, deal with the frustration of it. So you don't have to deal with the offenses feeling offended, feeling hurt, feeling pushed aside, feeling rejected. You don't have to be subjected to those emotions because that is what the enemy is trying to do, is subject you to those negative emotions tied to petty nonsense. All right, let me move on. As Jesus said, I don't pray that God delivers you from the world, but that God 
will deliver you in the world because you got to be here. You got to go through it. Okay. But your escape is leaning on God as you go through it so that he can be your buffer, so that he can be your painkiller, so that he can be your shield, your horn of salvation. All right. Now let's move on. <laughs> Seven. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother and this is just Pat adding her nonsense. And your boyfriend and your girlfriend and your partner and your roommate and your sister and your brother and your disciples and your students and your boss, whatever, forsake me. Then the Lord will take me up. No matter who you are being pushed aside by, no matter who's naysaying against you, no matter whose attitudes you got to battle with, God is on your side. And it's not that he's on your side and against them. He's pulling for all of you. But the quicker you lean on him, the quicker you get the help. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Do you know how many people will talk against you? Will tell you, you know, you disrespect me. You don't like me. Uh, I know you lied on me. I heard you talking about me behind my back. I know you took my money when my back was turned. I know you told the boss to fire me. I know you don't like me. I know this. I know that. And they will put all kind of blame on you. And you're wondering, where did that come from? Don't even sweat it, y'all. The Lord is your stay. The Lord is your anchor. The Lord is your painkiller. The Lord is your healer. And the Lord is your deliverer. Sooner or later, he will deliver you from that nonsense. But if you had any part or parcel in it, if you contributed anything to that problem, God will also show you where you stepped out of line so that you could learn and grow. Because there are times when people turn against us and we think we're doing things in innocence. And it really was a legitimate complaint on their part. Let me give you a quick example. You know me, I'll talk about me in the New York Minute. Years ago, I was clowning with a young lady at a party. She had invited me to the party. I was full of the joy of the Lord, y'all, but I was not full of wisdom. I was not full of sensitivity. And like I often tease Peter and Jeanette and Pat and Rashad and Lynn, and I tease a lot of people. I tease my, you know, people on the phone that I have friendships with. I tease people, but my teasing is honestly a form of affection. So when I call people big head and funny face and knucklehead and, you know, all the little crazy names, they really are verbal hugs coming from me. But the Lord taught me the hard way that I had to learn that not everyone was receptive of my kind of affection. And sometimes my words of affection to someone who is extremely wounded end up words of affliction, words of attack. Do you hear what I'm saying? Words of offense. So I had to bring my humor down by about 50%. 
and ask the Lord for wisdom dealing with different people. So even though my intention was right, the results were wrong. Even though my heart was in the right place with them, totally out of love and affection, they, they got nothing but mockery and disrespect. And I'm wondering, how could they get that out of that? Well, that's because God has healed me so much that I cannot allow myself, and it's easy to do, when you're away from your offenses so long, you tend to get insensitive to those who are still hurting, like you did. And I used to hurt a lot, but God healed me. So I have to watch from not getting insensitive. And I can cause problems clowning around, meaning no harm. That's why we have to lean on God at every turn because we have to use wisdom. Not everyone is going to smile when you joke. They might cry. And God taught me that lesson. That was a hard lesson for me because it was as if he was saying, not everyone wants you to hug them. And that's kind of a form of rejection to me. So I had to learn to refrain from a lot of the teasing and the joking that I do because the woman that I was teasing, she bawled me out. She literally bawled me out. And when I went to the Lord about it, the Lord let me know her complaint was legitimate. Her approach was not. Her, her form of expression was not legitimate but get the truth out of it anyway so you can grow because the more you grow the more people i can i can give access i can give you access to i'm honing you and training you for leadership you have to learn to deal with all these types of personalities many of you are going through testing and through here and you're learning god is honing you and shaping you to to position you for leadership to position you for different types of unique ministry. But you must learn how to deal with people. There are times when you hold them and you coddle them. There are times when you push them away and stay away for a while. There are times when you have harsh words of correction. And there are times when you could help, but you refrain from helping because all they're going to do is use you in place of God. So you have to ask God for wisdom when you're ministering to people. And you cannot go through this whole thing thinking it's all about you. Because if you do, every scenario will be a personal attack instead of a class lesson from God as he prepares you for leadership and ministry. So in these last days, we, like, like Lynn said, we have to watch how we respond because it's in our response that colors or flavors or spices up the end result. How will we come out on the other side of that lesson? Will we come out that much better or will we come out that much worse? How many more times will we have to go through that case scenario before we get the memo? How many times will we have to go through that case scenario and the other and the other and the other before we get it? It's not my brother. It's not my sister standing in the need of prayer. It's me. And when we get that, we won't be so quick to judge. We won't be so quick to point the finger and have that screw you attitude. But God will give us wisdom. Wisdom is not emotion. Wisdom does not say screw you. No, forget about you. Wisdom says refrain. Wisdom might say, Delay. 
Wisdom might tell you, wait on the Lord or be still and be silent. Do not defend yourself. Wisdom will tell you all kind of things that will go against your emotions and your flesh. But wisdom will do you good and the person you're dealing with. It will do them good as well. That's what wisdom will do. That's why you must acknowledge him in all your ways so that he can direct your path. Because when God directs you, baby, it's never going to be a bad turnout. You may go through some trials as you follow him. Because when we follow God, he leads us over the mountaintop, but then he also takes us down through the valley. And there are times like with Jesus, and if he did it with Jesus, don't think you're above being tested. <laughs> He took Jesus into the wilderness, baby. Where did he take the Israelites? The wilderness wanderings. Right. But what did the wilderness wanderings do? They cut away and chipped away at that old flesh, that old slave mentality, that pettiness, that fleshly way of thinking. That's what the wilderness does. That woodshed experience is a necessary evil that God will use in life to clean your behind up, to clean your attitude up, to clean your motives up, mm -hmm. to clean you up. Yes, he will. Because we, we tend to want to go through this life where everything is about me. Well, what he said about me? Why'd you do that to me? Well, what about me? You will make me happy? What about me? 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 Me, me, me. And God is trying to get me out of the equation because he said, I am. And when we get to be about the I am, the me's start coming out of the picture. And that's when we start to grow. That's when deliverance comes. That's when inner healing comes. When we get more concerned about the great I am than the fantastic me. See, the me part of our lives, that's the immaturity. That's thinking as a child, talking as a child, seeing as a child, understanding as a child. But when we get to the great I am, when we get to that level of thinking and everything revolves around the great I am, what does he think about what I'm doing? What does he think about my motive? What does he say about this? And he doesn't think, he knows. What does he say? What is he going to tell me about this, that, or the other? That's when you're acknowledging him in all your ways because you're more concerned about the great I am than you are about me, myself, and I. That's when life becomes richer. That's when you start to explode in areas of growth and maturity, inner strength, wisdom, insight, understanding, love, all of that, and peace. All of that comes the more you're focused on the great I am than you are on the daily nuances of life. I hope I said that right, that word in the right context. If I didn't, forgive me, y'all. But anyway, you know what I meant. <laughs> so, always consider the fact every situation, every area of friction, every turn, every challenge, every point of conflict, friction, whatever. Always say, Lord, what truth can I get out of this? What are you showing me about me? What are you showing me? What insight are you sharing with me about them? It's not about judging. It's about gaining more and more insight and understanding and doing it in love. <laughs> That's the challenge. Doing it in love rather than disgust. Mm. Yeah. So when God gets you to that point, y'all, you'll find yourself getting less and less upset and less and less tripped out by folks and their issues. Mm -hmm. 
That's when God begins to rise you above your enemies round about you because you're not caught up in the mess. You're above it now. You're out of it. You're out of the mess. You're listening to it. You're looking at it, but you're not a partaker. Mm, interesting, huh? Yeah. God bless you as you chew on that one. Or as my friend used to say, my friend Yvonne used to say, as you masticate on that one, that means chew. <laughs> uh, just think on that. The Bible would say, Selah. Think on that for a minute. God bless you as you grow in the Lord. God bless you as God prepares you for more and more ministry, for higher heights and deeper depths. God bless you as you move into a deeper level of anointing, inner strength, wisdom, love, character in Jesus' name. Hunger for holiness, y'all. You'll be all right. Amen. <laughs>